our health and our strength. We thank you, God, for you are our protector. We thank you, God, for you are our way maker, our everything. There is none like you. You're so wonderful. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of the praises. You're worthy of the glory. Oh, Jesus, my God, my God, we seek you tonight. We seek your face. We seek your will. Let your will be done in us, Lord. Prepare our minds. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, that we may do your will. Lord, that we may work in your kingdom. That the kingdom be expanded. That the kingdom be edified. Help us, Lord. Help us, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help your people to realize we're in the last days. Time is winding up. Oh, God. And we must be busy now, working in your kingdom. Give us a mind, Lord, to do your will. Give us a mind, Lord, to do work for you. Your work, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The work of the evangelist. God, give us that mind. Give us that heart, oh God. Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, our Deliverer. Let the fire burn. Let it burn in our hearts. Let it burn within us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, stir God. Stir your people. We need a stirring, Lord. Yes, we do. Stir our minds. Stir our hearts, Lord. Stir your people, God. Hallelujah. Let the church, oh God, become excited again. Excited about you. Excited about your work. Excited about the ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Let the people rise up. As a mighty army. Yes, Lord. An army, oh God, that will fight this battle under your direction. God, we need an anointing. Anoint us, God. Anoint us for your work. Anoint us, Lord, for thy will. Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, our deliverer. Jesus, our hope. You are my hope. You are my deliverer. You are my everything. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray tonight, God, that you will save. Move upon the hearts of the people, men and women, boys and girls. Move, Lord. Direct paths. Save and deliver. Set free, Lord. Set free, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The glory belong to you. The honor is yours. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You are my Savior. You are my deliverer. You are my hope. My hope for tomorrow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul said yes. Yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We love you. We love your name. We love the call on you. Your righteous name. Your holy name. There is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you now, God, for all that you've done. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I thank you for your many blessings. I want to thank you, God, for bringing us out of 22 into 23. Nobody but you, God, that kept us through seen and unseen dangers. God, some of us were sick and the enemy tried to take us out of here. But thank you for being my healer. Hallelujah. When the devil thought he had us. Thank you, God, for being my shield and my protector. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I praise you. 
Oh, God, I praise you. Just help me, Lord, to rely on your word even more, to understand your word. For, Lord, in your word is how our faith is built. Lord, I want my faith to go up to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me remember, God, the word that I've read, what has been taught and preached. Oh, God, that my faith will look up to thee in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I ask for restoration. Restore, God. Let there be a restoration in your house. Let there be a restoration in your body. Lord, there are those individuals who have not returned to church. God, I want you to touch them. Touch their minds, oh God. Touch their hearts, Lord Jesus. And deliver, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bind, oh God, a spirit of fear. Bind, Lord, a spirit of slowfulness. A spirit of unfaithfulness. Lord, if there's ever been a time before, we must be more faithful than ever. Oh God, we must hold on more than ever. Yes, Lord. For so many are falling, Lord. Falling by the wayside. Help me to stand, God. In a time like this. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bind the devil. Bind Satan right now. Bind his works, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Every plan that he has erected against your people. Tear them down, Lord. Lord, he's trying to destroy our families. He won't say our families doom. But bind him, Lord. And Lord, let peace be in the homes, God. Bless our homes, Lord. Oh, God, let every home be blessed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let relationship be blessed. That relationship between parents, husband and wives, mothers and fathers. Let the relationship be blessed. Between the parents and the children. Between the siblings, oh God. Let peace abide. Yes, Lord. And then, Lord, some people are dealing with situations where the children are wayward, where the children are doing all types of things. God, work it out. And let there be a change, Lord. Let there be a change, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let there be a miracle. Lord, where they may not be able to see. Oh, God, let them believe that you will come in and that you will make the difference. Yes, God, you are the one who makes the difference. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We pray, God, for this nation. Our nation is in trouble. The people are squabbling, Lord. They're fighting one another. There's chaos in our government. Oh, God, help now. Help our leaders. Lord, help our leaders to do what is right. Let them have a heart for the people. In the name of Jesus, touch our president, Lord. Touch his mind and heart. Those that are working with them, touch right now, Lord, that they will give the right advice. In the name of Jesus, oh, Jesus, help our governors, Lord, the mayors of these cities, oh, God, other politicians. You told us to pray, Lord, for kings and rulers. And we're doing just that now. We are praying for this nation. Yes, Lord. We're praying for our world. For there's disturbances around the world, God. We pray for the people of Ukraine. 
Lord, that this war will stop. That you help them, Lord, in this winter. There's these bitter temperatures that they're facing. Not only Ukraine, but Lord, there are Russians who need help as well. Let that war end, God. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, the other places where things can get started up. But Lord, I pray for peace. Yes, I do, Lord. I pray, God, that another world war will not get started. Yes, Lord. Help, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. You are the Prince of Peace. And we need you now, God, more than ever. Help, Lord. We need your help now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray again. I pray for the church, Lord. Let the church rise up. Let an army rise up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In power, Lord. With your spirit. With power from on high. God, help us to be in the position to receive the tools that we need in this war. Lord, you told your word that there are gifts. The gifts of the spirit. We need every one of them, Lord. We need every one of them, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be in the right frame of mind, the right position that we can receive those gifts. So help every one of us, Lord, that's in the body of Christ, that we look at ourselves, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, that we don't continue, Lord, to take on world ideals. Yes, Lord, take these worldly things away from us, Lord. Those things, Lord, that are deceitful. Those things, Lord, that will come between you and us. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, that we, we would empty of ourselves. Oh, God, that we would decrease and that you increase in us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Jesus. Just have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. In my life. Have your way, God. In my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Work a wonder in us, Lord. We pray for miracles. Lord, let the miracles happen in this place. In the life of the saints. Let it be so, God. I know you got more than what we can see. There's much more to you, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we would receive of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord, to be more spiritual minded. Lord, that I will set my affection on things above and not on this earth. Leave, oh God, lead me. Direct my path. Oh God, show me what I need to do. Show me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for guidance. I pray for wisdom. Lord, give us wisdom and understanding, Lord. In the name of Jesus, give us wisdom, Lord, for the year of 2023. There are some things, oh God, that's within our spirits that we want to see happen, Lord. Lord, give us the wisdom to go about it. Let the church prosper. Let the church progress in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you save tonight. Save the lost. Save, Lord. Save our children. Lord, these young people have come for Bible study. Save them, Lord. Turn them around, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Some of them are facing serious 
serious things. Oh God, let there be a change in their life. In the name of Jesus, saving our families, our loved ones and relatives. Oh God, their hearts that have been hardened. I pray you soften, that you soften their hearts. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the miracle of salvation. Indeed, it's a miracle. I understand, Lord. You won't make anybody become saved. But God, I pray that a miracle take place. That you speak to them, Lord. Speak to their spirits. Let them be a shaking. Oh, God. Reveal yourself to them. Family members, Lord. Our children, Lord. Reveal yourself, God. That they might come to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the ministry. Lord, that the people will go out and bring people in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give them a mind to work. Give them a mind to be soul winners. Yes, Lord, let the Holy Ghost fall on us to give us that power, that power to be witnesses, Lord. Power of the high. Yes, Lord, let it be so, God. In the name of Jesus, come, Jesus, we just love you. We love your name. We love to call your name. What a wonder, what a wonder. Wonder. What a wonder about you. We love you. We adore you. We praise you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, God. You've been so kind. You've been so good. We just praise you. Oh, we praise you. Hey, hey, hey. Lord, we praise you now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I pray, God, for this new year of 2023. Let the Bible study be strong. Lord, give us a mind to study your word. Yes, Lord, let the Sunday school be strong. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let this year be a different year. Thank you, Jesus. Like no other. Let there be a move of your spirit among your saints. Like it was in the older days. Let your glory fill the house. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you now in advance. I thank you now, God, for what you're about to do. I thank you now, Lord, for the glory that will be revealed in us. Your glory, Lord, that is in the house now. Oh, God, let it be, Lord, let it be even more. Let your glory be revealed every time we come here. Let people's hearts be changed. Let the people be blessed, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we love you. We love your name now. And we praise you. We glorify you. Well, you're such an awesome God. You're such a wonderful God. I pray that you bless tonight. Bless us, oh God, in this Bible study period. Let the word go forth that we may be a better people and better workers in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. We thank God for his goodness. And we thank God for his blessings. All right. It's good to see each and every one of you that's here. May the Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. All right. I'm going to have to.
like reposition because I'm getting some heat back up here. Uh, Sister Ann, we all we got volume and everything. Let's check us out to be sure. One, one uh, Wednesday night, we were on and it didn't have the volume. So we'll be sure that we have everything. All right. Let's check it real quick to be sure that we are all complete. All right. It's good to be here. Amen. 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 We have it. For this first night in our Bible study period, uh, to be back again. And I'm trying to see, can I do something to keep get this feedback out? Let me see. Well, I'll have to do it with a little bit tonight. All right. We are actually going to chapter 3. Does everybody have a book? You, you don't have a book, do you? All right. Sister Lee, when you get through making adjustments, we get another book as well. Uh, are we? we, we yeah, I need, I need at least one book with Brother Betrayal. How are we sound? Are we on? Yes, sir. We're on. Okay. We're just checking. We're here. All right. We're in chapter three, actually. The, uh, the, the title for chapter three is The Chaotic Earth. The Chaotic Earth. Let me see if that, yeah, that is the chapter. We studied, and since we've been away for a little while, last week, let's review. How many of you all were here last week? Let me see a show of hands. How many people were here last week? All right. Not last week, week before that. Yeah, how many people here week before? Okay. So some were and some were not. But last week in chapter two, so, so week before that day. <laughs> so I guess we have been gone about two weeks because one week we did have the Christmas program, and then last week uh, we did not do Bible study. I decided we would just uh, allow the people to enjoy their family. I hope that you had a great Christmas, and I hope that you had an opportunity to. Uh, be with the family. I was blessed uh, to be with mine. About four generations were there. So people were at home. Sometimes there'd be more than 20 of us that would have an opportunity to be together. And so I am certainly grateful that the Lord has allowed family time. And I think that's important. I think that is very important. And so that's why we uh, did not come last week. Now, to go back just for a moment, we're going to talk about the original perfect earth. Can anybody tell me something that you learned? Something that you learned about the original perfect earth? Anybody? Something that you learned? Well, let me start it off since y'all slow. We looked at that chapter and, and we looked at scriptures that seem to indicate uh, that between verses 1 and verse 2, and I think it's important to go back to this to help us understand the chapter we're going to deal with tonight. And what I mean by verse 1 and verse 2, I'm talking about in Genesis chapter 1. All right, Genesis chapter 1. Can y'all hear me if I get off this mic? Mm -hmm. I got too much feedback up here tonight for really. that. So, so I'm gonna try to talk loud, but I'll probably need you to talk on the mic so they, so they pick up on uh, the camera so those that at home can hear. But in, in Genesis chapter one, let's read. Uh, everybody know the first verse say, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And then verse two says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, we contend that something happened between verse 1 and verse 2, all right? Because God created the heaven and earth, but then verse 2 said the earth was without, what, form, and it was void. Those words, form and void, without form and void, indicate waste or a wasteland. And as you keep reading, uh, as 
the Lord began to deal with the earth in verse 3. He said, let there be light. And there was light because there was no light on earth. There was completely dark. And then as you keep reading, he separated the, the one reading was dark because when you get to uh, verse uh, 6 and thereafter, he separated the firmament from the waters. The firmament would be the clouds that's made of a water droplets. The clouds that should be in the atmosphere were all went down to the surface of the earth. And that would help explain why uh, the sun itself no light or heat could get to the surface of the earth. Okay. And not only that, but the earth in terms of water and land, it was all mixing together. No separation. So therefore, nothing could live on earth in that state. But we, but we, we talk about the fact God as to who he is, he would not have created something like that. A mess. Something that's chaotic. Uh, that's not that's not who God is. Because when God does something, he does something well. And then we have proof of the fact that he did not create the original earth uh, as such. In Isaiah, I want to read it again. We read it last week. I'm just doing a quick review. We're going to get into the chapter that's supposed to be on. But I think it's important, maybe for those who were not here to get a glimpse of what we're talking about. And then this is going to help us go into the new chapter as well. But uh, when we uh, look at Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 18, it says, For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. Listen to this. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. So Isaiah speaking here, the Lord is speaking through Isaiah, who said, I created the heavens, I formed the earth, I established it, and when I created it, I didn't create it in vain. But when I made it or formed it, I made it as a place that could be inhabited. Now, that's a totally different picture than what you see verse 2 on now. So something happened. Between verse 1 and verse 2. All right. Something happened to it, verse 1 first and verse 2. Uh, it could be that you have thousands or millions of years between those two verses. See, not only is the Bible not written in chronological order, but there are a lot of gaps. There's a lot uh, that has occurred that we have very little information. Even when you go beyond the creation of Adam and Eve and, and, and families would begin to uh, go forth in this world, uh, the first 1,000 years, maybe 1,500 years, we have very little information about. That is from Genesis 3 to about Genesis, what, maybe 11. You got over 1,000 years, maybe 1,500 years to go back and look at that. But uh, we, 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 most of that time, we really don't know very much. We don't really know what's going on because the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot. Uh, actually, what's going on. By the time you end Genesis, you way over 2,000 years. Now, look at this. Way over 2,000 years. And the Old Testament, that is from Adam time to Malachi, is only 4,000 years. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of things that have occurred that we don't have record of. A lot of, a lot of unknowns. And mm -hmm. you know what? That's okay because the Spirit of God has uh, those persons who wrote these books, he gave them what was needful and necessary that is for the plan of salvation. Now there are hints to some other things. Alright? And, and I think that it's good to study these things. I don't think that the Lord mind has studied that inquiring and then there's some things that are debatable there's some things you can clearly see but there's some things and I'm going to say this again I said this at the very beginning when we started studying this that if a person does not agree that there was something here before Adam and Eve that's okay too if a person disagree with me or disagree with you if you, if you accept this why? 
because it's not essential to the plan of salvation. Now, what we do have to agree on is that Jesus died Amen. for our sins. And if we're going to go to heaven, we got to go through the blood of Christ. You, you had a question or a comment? A, a scripture, and I, I don't know exactly where to look for it, but is there a scripture to some what saying that Jesus died for our sins? Or is it You might be referring to the New Testament scripture that talks about we look through a glass darkly. Uh, and that scripture has reference really to uh, there are some things that will not necessarily be made known no, until that time that right. we are called up to meet the Lord. That might be what you're referring to. Okay. okay. Uh, in chapter 3, the chaotic earth and the very first verse that he has on here, and the earth was without form and void. This is what we just read a minute ago. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. This chapter is going to deal with uh, what happened or what took place to make the earth uh, chaotic. Look at what he says in the description in Genesis 1 and 2. This is what the author said. As has already been proved, a better translation of this verse would be, but the earth had become without form and void. He said a better translation would be, but the earth had become without form and void. Now the old saints who teach us, don't you change one word <laughs> in the Bible. Y'all heard that before, have you? Yeah. Don't you change, because... You know, and they use what's in the book of Revelation, uh, the fact that if you add to it, Lord say you add plagues that are written in the book, if you take away, and then you, there's, there will be some consequences. But uh, that's not applying to this, what the author said here, because what what you must understand is that the, the original language of the Bible, Old Testament is Hebrew, New Testament Greek, got a little Aramaic in the Old Testament uh, to translate from those languages over to the English language is not as easy as many of you would think it would be because there's certain words that we have in the English language that they don't have in Hebrew. And then there's some Hebrew words that have multiple meanings. And what the older saints did not know as they were using the King James Version, which I do believe is the most reliable version you have, that you had uh, several more versions before the King James. And what we have in terms of King James is actually uh, an improved uh, English translation from the ones that came beforehand. Because some of the ones that, that came before King James, I've seen them. They're very hard for you to read in today's time. So, it's okay if the author looked at it because he pointed out something on page 22. Uh, let me see, can I find it real quick? We talked about this the other, the other week. If you go back to page 22, he said the word was in this phrase is the Hebrew word haya, which is the verb to become, not the verb to be. The phrase should actually be translated, but the earth had become, which I just read, had become without form and void. For the word higher is rendered the king 67 times. So he's saying that it is, instead of where the word was was used and earth was without form, a better translation for us in the English today would have been, but the earth had become. And, and uh, other translators, ancient Jewish people, that's, what, and that's how they translate the scripture. To denote that the earth in verse 2 had changed drastically from what? From the perfect earth that God had created. Now, uh, he goes on to talk about the description from, from Jeremiah. So, if you go to page 30, I'm going to read it out of my Bible. But he has it there if you don't have your Bibles with me. I want to encourage you to bring your Bibles, even though many of the scriptures that we will go over in the book that saw that or not. But let's examine Jeremiah 4 and 23. 
All right, Jeremiah 4 and 23. This is, what, this is what Isaiah said as the Spirit of God spoke to him. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. That kind of sounds like Genesis, doesn't it? Almost the same. Look at this verse again. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. Verse 24, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, this is verse 25, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. This has to be pre-Adamic, or pre or before Adam, all right? Because that description, you can't find it in record anywhere else where the whole earth was what? Without form and void. Something that's without form and void denotes the wrath of God. It, it denotes punishment. And we know that God's wrath is what? Will be poured out. But when you look at what Jeremiah says and compares it Compared with what the book of Genesis said, you see a total destruction. Total destruction. Because look what it said. It said there was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. Verse 26 said it was a wilderness. No, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And look at this. And the cities were broken down. Now, the closest, the, the closest thing to this destruction would be. The flood of Noah, or Noah's flood, or the flood that came to Noah's time. But even when you talk about uh, what happened with the flood during Noah's time, you didn't have a complete destruction. Now, do know that. You do know that, right? It wouldn't fit this because the script said no man. Well, Noah, his wife, his three sons, their wives were, were there, right? There were animals. The, the, the script here talks about there were no birds. All right? Birds were, all types of birds were on that ark. Animals were on that ark. And here's something else that you may not have thought about, but the marine life, those animals in the ocean, they didn't die during uh, the flood that came during Noah's day. They continued to live. All right? He didn't take a whale on that ark. <laughs> he didn't take fish because how would he have kept a whale on that ark? So all those animals uh, of the ocean, they continued to live during that flood. So it was not a complete destruction, even though it was very well, very close. But before Adam time, you what? You had a complete destruction. So on page 30, he said the phrase without form and void comes from the Hebrew tohu wa bohu. That's where that phrase called it, without form and void. That's over in Genesis uh, chapter 1. And, and you see something similar in Jeremiah chapter 4. Comes from the Greek word uh, again, tohu wa bohu. Now, he tells us from the outset, we can unequivocally say unequivocally that both words, tohu and bohu, for the current together or separate, are used throughout the Bible. To describe something under the judgment of God. Tohu is used of something that has been laid waste. And you can look at these scriptures. Isaiah 24 and 10, 34 and 11, Jeremiah 4 and 23. I went and looked at those scriptures. You can go on the uh, internet. Um, there's a site, studylight.org, I believe it is. And you can pull up the Hebrew. Now, we, I, I know we have not studied Hebrew. I have not studied Hebrew. But you can click on the Hebrew word to get uh, the English definition. And in those verses, you would no doubt see tohu, all right? Which uh, shown in those verses, something had been laid waste because it was because of the wrath of God. That same uh, Hebrew word is used here in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. But he goes back to say that 
uh, Isaiah 45 and 18 has established the fact that when God created the earth, he did not create the earth. He did not create this earth in a state of tohu. Tohu being what? Waste. All right? Look at page 31. What caused the earth to pass into this chaotic state that Jeremiah described? Look at what, 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 what is listed by the author. There were no mountains and hills. There were, there were, I'm sorry. Uh, number one, there were mountains here, that is, before the destruction. Number two, there were few places, gardens, etc. There were cities, verse 26. There were birds and animals, verse 25. There were men who lived in cities, but their cities were broken down. All vegetation, men and animals were totally destroyed by the presence of the Lord and his fierce anger. All right. Number six, the earth had become tohu wabahu. Number seven, the heavens were without their light. So uh, he goes on to say, this is what you see in Genesis 1 and 2. It explains why darkness was upon the face of the deep. We talked about last week. Science teaches us that there was a time known as the great ice age. How many of y'all remember studying that in school? Now, uh, theologians of the past, many of them, they had problems accepting the Ice Age. Why? Because it's not in the, it's not in the Bible. All right? But they failed to realize, most of them, there were a few many, many years ago who saw this, that something no doubt happened before uh, Adam and Eve as such. True signs. Real science actually agrees with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real science actually agrees. Because we talked about, I won't say last week, but the last time we hit the Bible study, that what about the, the time of the dinosaurs, mm -hmm. the mammoth, and all those animals that scientists have proven yes. were here on Earth? Mm -hmm. Okay? It's been proven that we're here on Earth. Some other things. So it has to come in that, that time period. This destruction that seemed to occur, this, discussion, this destruction seemed to happen at a very fast pace. It, it happened all of a sudden. Uh, scientists, when they talk about uh, uh, that time period, they talked about some of the animals, the, the range of some of those animals they found. They found some of those animals with, with food in their mouth. So they, they were eating and from studying the animal, the remains of the animal, they could see that something drastic happened. You know, and, and, and that that animal or those animals died all of a sudden because it was very drastic. Now the Bible seems to indicate that there may have been a great flood that even took place then. We're going we're gonna to look at that in a minute. And uh, it was not the flood of Noah's time. Okay. We, we just talked about that the flood during Noah's time did destroy everything. But this flood destroyed everything. And then on top of that, uh, with no light coming, so no heat, then seemingly everything was just frozen here on earth. Now, look at, at the bottom of page 31, rain of loose from the earth. Scriptures indicate that God placed Lucifer here as the ruler of this earth. All right. Uh, is that, Sister Knight, you, know, you, you asked about a scripture. Is that scripture over in Colossians that we were talking about? Yeah. It's what it's Colossians chapter 1, isn't it? Uh, you know, you know Sunday when I was talking about how, how vast outer space is? You remember I was talking about that in the sermon? And, and uh, you, you, you know, we're we in one galaxy, and the galaxy that we're in uh, is composed of many solar systems. We're in one solar system, but there are many solar systems. And, and once you get past our solar system, you go to another one. And once you get past that, if you could, you, you would go out of our galaxies, but in fact, there are billions of galaxies. So, did you find that scripture? Uh, 
You read it, read it, read it out loud so they can hear you on Facebook too. <laughs> okay. All right, Colossians 1 and 16. Oh, oh I'll go ahead and read since you still change the version. It says, for by him, that's speaking of Jesus, were all things created that, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be, look at this, thrones. Y'all see that, don't you? All right, or dominions. That speak of something being ruled. Or, you know, principalities talking about rulership, principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So, theologians are, some theologians believe, because we don't know how many angels God made, and angels have, you got different ranks in angels. We know that Lucifer and Gabriel and Michael, they were archangels. We, we do know that. And you have some others of a lower rank, the different ranks. But it, it appears that possibly God made some of these angels as rulers of certain areas. That's where you get the principalities and the thrones and dominion. So Lucifer was one of these because, go back to page 32, and these scriptures are coming from Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, where the writer said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? Look at this. Which did this weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation, the sides of the north. I will ascend above, above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now look what he said. He said that I will uh, ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now, does that not speak to you saying that God had given him a throne? Had given him authority? So it must have been here on earth. Because look what he said. He said, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. Which means it would indicate he's looking up. And we believe that he heaven, planted heaven, is known. That's what scriptures indicate. Where well, even here say in the size of the north. So he wants to do what? He wants to take over mm -hmm. our God's creation and the, the rule. And he did attempt by invading heaven. Other scriptures indicate this. I, I didn't think, I should have been thinking. I had a scripture written down, so we'll go to it real quick. But when he does, uh, you, you should be familiar with the fact that there actually was a war in heaven. Michael, the archangel, comes forward, comes forward, and he defeats Lucifer. And Lucifer is, is what? He's thrown out of heaven. All right? He's thrown out of heaven. Uh, and a third part of the angels were with him. That's indicated by scripture in Revelation chapter 12. So he, he was able to get, what, a third of the angels to participate in his rebellion. But... Apparently, whatever creation was here on earth, he had them involved in it to fight against God. Not necessarily, I don't believe they went to heaven to fight, but I do believe that they became very rebellious to the point that if they could have gotten there, they would have fought. All right? And they must have been cheering Satan on. Satan, no, Satan is a, is a deceiver. He's very, very intelligent, very crafty and common. So he must deceive the people into believing uh, that I can overthrow God. And then you will have to be doing all this holy stuff and living righteous. Because God is holy whatever time period you're in. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And, and so apparently that's what happened. Because look, what, look what, what Isaiah said, which did is weaken the nation. All right. Well, the very next section says rebellion of Lucifer and Earth's inhabitants. So, and I basically describe that particular section. All right, question? Yeah, because last time I, had, I, studied, I wrote this question, and I think you said you were reading it. You will let us know when the demons came into the earth. Mm -hmm. Because I 
And that's what we get ready to look okay. at. <laughs> that's the very next section on page 33. Distinction between demons and fallen angels. First of all, uh, many theologians in their writing, they, they, they are so wrong in saying that the angels became demons. Angels, uh, and that is fallen angels. Fallen angels are completely different from demons. What's the difference? Demons are disembodied spirits. They don't have a body. And they need a human body. They need a human body. That's what they prefer. Or they can they would actually get into an animal. An animal. And, and guess what? There's indication that they have gotten an animal. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. The late Elder Barry used to always say that persons that participated in homosexual activity, he said a man that would do that was lower than a dog because a dog knew better than to be with the same sex. That's what he used to say back in the 1980s. Well, it's sad to report that they have found some homosexual dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some dogs and other animals who prefer to be with the same sex. Yeah, it's happened. That would show you uh, that's the work of demons. Because it's unnatural. Homosexuality, the lesbianism, that's the work of demon spirits. Because it's totally unnatural. It's unnatural for a 6 five. 300 pound man to be switching down this aisle like a woman. <laughs> That's unnatural. Alright? And vice versa for a female uh, to, to have all the manly attributes. And we understand that uh, some girls uh, wrestle that, that little tomboys. We're not talking about that. You know, you can have a guy who is a uh, He's straight, but he may have feminine characteristics. There's a difference in feminine characteristics and what? Just want to be a woman. Or to act like a woman. Don't want to be a man at all. It's total difference there. So that's the work of demon spirits. Demon spirits, the best way for me to, to get you to see this, we talked about the fact that we as human beings, we have a body. That's what we can see. The body is the house. You are a soul that has a spirit. Three parts. Body, soul, spirit. The Bible said the body without the, without the spirit is what? Dead. So at death, there's a what? There is a separation. I believe the spirit man, spirit part of you, living inside your body, I believe that it looks pretty much like your physical man does. All right? At death, there's a separation. See, your physical body is nothing but a house. Your eyes are nothing but a window for you, for the real you to see into the physical world. But at the time of death, your spirit and soul, which is spirit man, leaves the body. It's going to go on to heaven, if you say, or goes to hell. Your spirit man cannot stay on earth because it has no way to communicate with the physical world. It must have a body. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So it appears that these demon spirits are similar, we might say, to really your spirit in one sense. I'm not going to say they're identical because we don't know exactly what, what, what we're dealing with in that time period. But angels, angels, fallen angels, all right, have real bodies. Now, listen, there is the natural world, there's the spirit world. The spirit world is just as real as the natural world. It's just that we are not privileged at this time to really see or to know what's in the spirit world. Unless God opened your eyes and let you look over him. And he can do that. So angels who are of the spirit world have real bodies. Yeah, angels have real bodies. Then if you could, uh, what? If, if God would open your eyes, or it seems that they have the ability to what? 
to appear and disappear. That has happened where they manifest themselves. Now don't go home praying to see an angel. That's not what you're supposed to do. Angels are the messengers of God. They are, they are his ambassador. And see, some folk that got all off track talking about praying to the angels. I won't send angels over here to help. Angels to ask them. No, you don't pray to angels. You pray to, to God. You pray to the Lord. But they're real and they're there. I, I told this story. Let me, let, me, let me tell you real quick. He's preached here before uh, Pastor Luther Holmes was with us once. He didn't tell this story when he was here. I heard him preaching somewhere else. He talks about the fact that he and his family were on their way home one night uh, from church, and they were on the highway, and the car broke down. So you remember that, that story. So most of y'all remember that story. But you remember that story when, when, the, when the crooks got up there to do him harm uh, and talk about they were going to kill him if he didn't open the window or open the door. Within 10 minutes, they took off running. Left. Six months later, he saw that same man in church. He got saved. And he asked him, said, You wanted to kill me. He said, when I was in that car with my family, you wanted to kill me. He said, Why did you why did you run? He said, I looked in your car and in the back seat where his kids were, I saw a man that was so big, he he could not even fit in your car. He was in your car, just waist up. So he pointed his finger at me. And say, you better not shoot him. You better not let the other man shoot him. God opened his eyes and his ears to see the angel that was in that car and to hear his voice. So you see, angels are real. They have real bodies. All right? Different from demons. So you, you got that question. Then we'll come back to her question. The fallen angels, or, or you say the uh, fallen angels of the real world, have real bodies. Yes. So the uh, the fallen angels coming from heaven. Well, or, they don't reside in they don't reside in heaven itself. The third now you got three heavens, so don't want to get everybody confused. What you probably refer to heaven where God is. No, they don't reside there because they were kicked out. Okay. Where they primarily reside is in the second heaven, the second which would be the outer space. That's where, that's where Satan primarily resides because he's the prince of the power of the air. But they come back and forth to earth. So they come out down here and hang out on earth too. Hmm. Yeah. And we, and next week's lesson, we're going to look at some things that they did <laughs> when they were hanging out on earth. They have access to the third heaven. Satan yet goes to heaven just as bold because God allowed right now. Talk to him. That's why the Bible says he is an accuser of the brethren. Right. He goes back and forth. And remember, and then he's hanging out on earth for time because when he was at Job and, and, and he happened to pop up in heaven one day, the Lord said, Where you come from? He said, I've been walking to and for the earth. In other words, I've been looking for somebody I can control. But that's where Job name came from. So he can go back and forth up to heaven where God is. He can come down to the earth. But in Revelation chapter 12, which be in the end time during the tribulation period, in the middle of the tribulation, he's going to be thrown to the earth and no longer allowed in the second heaven or the third heaven where God is. Now, to go back to her question, uh, and I, I think I agree with this particular scholar, there are about two different uh, theories but, but it's, it would seem that uh, these disembodied spirit demons, it, it would appear that they are the spirits of that creation before Adam and Eve. And perhaps the Lord, as a part of their punishment, has confined them here to this earth without a body without a body at all. And that's why they desire to work. They're going to come in quiet. Come in quiet. We that close to the time? Yes, sir. Oh, I, so we, we, we'll get ready to end in a few, few minutes because we know they can be kind of restless if they finish. Sister Lee.
Sister so, Lee, ask them if they can stay back there for just about five minutes. We're going we to cut it off. Ask them if they can just stay back there for about five more minutes. But, but the finish is up. Listen, uh, it appears that God, as a part of their punishment, uh, confined them here to the earth. They know they got to go to hell one day. But that they are there, here on earth, and they cannot uh, function in this physical world because they don't have a physical body. That's why they seek to get into your body or to a human body. Because think about this. If your spirit came out of your body and you were just hanging out here on earth and you saw your loved one, y'all remember that movie Ghost Dad? All right. And, you know, we know all this fiction, but it kind of, kind of fit into what I'm talking about, you would be most miserable. You couldn't, you couldn't communicate with those in the physical world. So what they do, they'll come in and live in a person's body, use that body for wickedness, use that body even to speak, because they they get in your body and use your vocal cords. You remember when Jesus went into the land of Galilee and there were, what, uh, there was a man, the man that was possessed by demons who lived out in the cemetery, hollering day and night. Jesus asked him, say, what is your name? One of the demons declared his name was Legion. Legion really indicated that there may have been 6,000 demons in that man, but uh, maybe one of the more powerful ones actually spoke. Now, if you've never seen this before, I, I have witnessed this before. I, I've seen it before. I've seen Demon possessed people, uh, where the voice changes, bass voice, they go up to a soprano voice, all kinds of things. I've said they're real. It's not something to play with. They're they're in in this world, all right. And of course, as the saints of God, you don't have to be worried about them. You just live holy, live right. Mm -hmm. But people do certain things to open themselves to demon spirits for possession or or if they don't really possess to strongly influence. One of the ways that people uh, open themselves to demon spirits is through drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol. Because, see, drugs and alcohol affect the mind, mm -hmm. the brain. All right, one writer said that when a person is drunk or a person is high, that actually it's a separation of your brain from your uh, spirit man, all right. He said he said that your spirit man operates the brain like a computer. Say you know if you work on a computer, you get up, go so somebody else can work on the computer. He said that's what alcohol does. It allows somebody else to operate your computer, your brain, and you, and so you know people that are drunk, they say stuff that they normally wouldn't say. They do stuff they normally would not do. That's 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 the way to open up. Uh, I, I, I'm. Getting into some other things now. Yeah. But but I was listening to some preacher was talking the other day. Uh, you may not have seen very much of this in this area. And you may have, I don't know, but these, what they call Ouija boards? That's Ouija board? Yeah, Ouija. That's demonic. Mm -hmm. Tarot cards and all this other stuff. You're inviting spirits to come in. And what these people are saying that happens to them is, in many cases is real. That's right. So we as people of the Lord, you don't play around with that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't let your children get involved with that kind of stuff. Uh, all kind of stuff. That, but, but this is where we believe it came from. The other theory that's real quick that he doesn't talk about this, is, and we're going to be looking at it in, in a future uh, chapter, is that there were giants that were in the land. This is You can see this in Genesis chapter 6 where the sons of God saw that the doors of men were fair and were beautiful. Uh, angels are real. Now, I know Jesus said that they, they didn't marry, that angels don't marry. But see, angels had no reason to marry. We marry to what? To have offspring. Angels, all the angels were created at one time, probably. So there's no need. But that does not to say that they were sex, sexless. Because Genesis chapter 6 talks about how they came and saw the daughters of men and it came unto them mm -hmm. at a sexual union. And their products were giants. Some of the giants 
could have been uh, 19 feet tall. There's one indication the book I got at home say he might have been 20 or 30 feet. Men that were very big, very powerful, but they were not altogether human. And because the scripture in Isaiah, uh, it used the word dead. That word dead is not talking about like a person died, but it comes from a Hebrew word, raphium. Raphium is a word for giant. They talk about the dead in that scripture would not get up in their resurrection, like Goliath. Mm -hmm. When we have when, when the resurrection takes place, he will not get up. They are already in hell to never get up. So some theologians say that well, they had some type of spirit, so they try and say that maybe that's where demon spirits came from. That's another theory. I support this one here. I think this is the one that makes the most sense. Question. Yeah, you remember we were in uh, on the altar. It was about six of us here. Okay. And one of our members uh, went into a trance or something. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That was so scary. I had yeah. never seen nothing like that in my life. I was, that particular person was demon possessed or greatly influenced by a demon. Because there was some psychosis that was involved in that. But some psychosis was demons, not all of them. Some of them. Some that could be demons. So, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the devil definitely was working with her in that situation. Definitely. Okay. Our time is up. We get to talk in, in, in this. I thought we'd we'll give it a lot further, but uh, I hope y'all are getting something out of it. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I like to teach uh, this type of stuff. Because I'm learning to I'm reading. I said, wow. You keep reading, you still learn something. So listen, let's hang on in, in here. Uh, next week, the Lord says, saying, we'll be back. And we'll go back to this chapter. If you got questions, like Sister Knight had a question. Knight and Jones had a question tonight. Write your question down and bring it back. And we will uh, try our best to answer it. Uh, let me remind you. Well, let me say this right quick. I got a couple of announcements. You, if you got an offer, go ahead and get your offer together. We're going to dismiss it in a moment. Listen, I'm going to be in Greenwood, Mississippi, the Lord says the same, on Friday night at the St. Luke Church of God in Christ. They have a three-night revival starting tonight. Different speaker every night. I'll be the last speaker. If you'd like to go, let us know. We'd be glad for you to go with us on Friday night. Sunday is the Lord's Day. Got a guest speaker. Please, everybody. Let's be here for the morning service. Let's be on time. The elder Kenneth Dean is going to be with us on Sunday. He's going to bring the gospel message. And I forgot to get this announcement to the announcer as well. Sunday night, House of Prayer will begin their winter revival. The superintendent, Jesse Hutton, is going to be the speaker uh, at House of Prayer. I would like for you all to support that revival. At least go one night. I'm going to go Sunday night. And I'd like y'all to go with because as pastors in this area, we're going to try to work together. We're going to try to work together. When our revival come around in February, the other churches will probably be with us. So let's go and support uh, House of Prayer in their revival on next week. All right. We're going to go ahead and dismiss. You still going to get your offer just to sleep. God in heaven, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. I pray that you bless the offering, bless every giver and every person with the heart to give. Bless us, O oh Lord, as we go to our separate homes tonight. Take us as safely and bring us back at the point in time. In Jesus' name, amen.